tools to keep calm. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulihil kareem. Amma baad, fa'auzu billahi minash shaytani rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Rabbi yasir, wa la tu'asir, wa tammin bil khair. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. With the mercy and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are together for purposeful, positive parenting. Triple P. And for that, one of the things which is very, very important is how to keep calm. No matter what's happening around us, you know, in the world overall, or in our houses, whatsoever is happening around, maybe at our workplace, maybe, you know, at the places where we interact with, maybe in other people's life and situations, we should not end up in a situation where it becomes analysis paralysis or it becomes like we are numbified ourselves. Right? We have to do what we can do, inshallah. So today, inshallah, these moments that we have together when we will see that when we are calm and serene, our body naturally produces endomorphins, right? Endorphins and that can improve our mood and it can make us happy. How many of us would like to be happy people? Yes? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we will see that how can we be calm. And staying calm allows us to think logically and make decisions accordingly. And a sense of calm offers us strength and resilience amidst the chaos of life. There is no such thing as perfect life. Things will happen every day. Kuch na kuch, anything, something will happen every day. So first off, let's understand what does it mean to be, be calm. Okay? Being calm is a state of peace and poise. It is without any mental restlessness or uneasiness. Their benefits are plenty. And I want you to think about what is one benefit that I really, really want in my life right now. Okay? One benefit. Because the opposite of keep calm is stress and worry and anxiety. And it has so many diseases linked with it, subhanAllah. And I am telling you from you know experience like watching the MRI reports and things and whatnot that what all it can do if you're not just calm. So being calm is like a huge, huge, huge uh, name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it helps you, it prevents you from negative emotions, it clears thoughts and ideas. You will live a life which has less fights. Okay, and less arguments. You will live a more healthy life. And uh, it will help you develop a positive mindset. So Alhamdulillah is a tahdith and nemat. I'm going to share that we are sitting here in, at Al Huda, right? In International Institute here. Alhamdulillah talking about how to keep calm. So this gathering, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to, you know, have a lot of intention that I am going to benefit myself. So phase out anything and everything right now. Nobody who, no matter who you are listening to this, maybe you are a parent who has children of their own. Maybe you are a caregiver. Maybe you are a teacher who is interacting with some children. In all those situations, I want you to remind you that you're not just raising a child. You're not just interacting with a child. You are raising an ambassador of Islam, inshallah. You have a huge amana in your hands on whom, whom you will be asked on the Day of Judgment. And these children that sometimes annoy us, you know, do think too much, <laughs> they, they do things, this, these can be your door to Jannah, inshallah, right? So we really, really have to, uh, you know, uh, be very mindful that alhamdulillah, thum alhamdulillah, Allah has elevated my status by giving a child in my in, in, in my you know supervision in, in my custody subhanallah so in the very beginning I am able to make more decisions and choices for that child Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to do them rightfully so that later they are able to make the right decisions for their life inshallah so we start with du'as and there are lots of du'as of knowledge and we ask Allah to help us benefit us from what we learn and help us stay away from that knowledge that does not benefit us we don't want to you know engage ourselves in useless conversations or useless you know wasting of time so Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa arzuqna tiba'u wa arina al-batila batila wa arzuqna ajtinaba Allahumma anfa'ana bima alamtana wa alimna ma yanfa'una wa zidna ilma Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Now inshallah we all know those, these du'as take a pause, say them, connect to the creator uh, reach out because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening Right? So that is one of the key things that you can always reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially when you are in sessions of gathering, the angels surround you and your du'as go faster. So you can make du'as, you know, no matter which relationship is coming to your mind that is causing you to be uncalm, this is the time to make du'as. 
lots of du'as regarding that. And I want to hear from you that anybody would like to share if they do panic at times, they don't feel calm. And hmm? you think everybody panics? You all agree? <laughs> so who would like to share? What makes me panic? Yeah, what is a big problem right now that I'm facing that I really am looking forward to a solution for? Social media for the children. You want to give me an exact situation? Like if you want to say social media, you want to give me an exact situation? What about social media? And so what, what, what is the child doing on the screen? Huh? Cartoons. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Having lunch, dinner, doing cartoons. If something is available, they will eat lunch, dinner, and they do their lunch. If it's not available, they didn't eat their lunch, dinner, or anything. Okay. Okay. Alhamdulillah. You raised something else that was children? Anybody else who wants to share? What makes me panic? Sibling fighting. Sibling fighting. When you have, you know, more than one child and you have two or two plus more, you go like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? It's beautiful. We have Surah Yusuf, right, regarding that, that it's very normal. It's very, you know, it's, it's there. Sibling rivalry is there. It's very relevant. He, this, these were the siblings in the house of a prophet, subhanAllah, right? Anything else which I may be missing? Every day in the morning takes me too long to get up and get ready. Okay. Yeah, when we are getting out, of, uh, one child, she wants to go to toilet mm -hmm. or something else. So th that is... She wants to go to? Toilet, toilet, okay. Or, or something. Okay. She left something or there is something. Okay. So that is the only thing I I could panic in a day. That's it. Okay. When we are out. Everything is. <laughs> <laughs> we made it out, hooray! Right? Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. So before that, you have a slot. Yes. Choosing between uh, Darul Islam and Darul Kufr, where to raise kids, which mm -hmm. has two options. Mm -hmm. That is. Mm -hmm. That causes you, you know, stress there. Okay, Alhamdulillah. How do, how do I create a Darus Salaam? And and honestly, you know, when I was coming here, I was talking to Sister Maryam. You know, she was saying like, you know, you live in the West and they live in the East. So what works in the West? How can you share with that? That's why I asked you again, where going where because we have a store called Target over there. So I was like, what he wants? She wants to go to Target or what did she say? So so yes, they, you have to make conscious decisions, Darul Salam or Darul uh, Kufr. How do you want to do it? Okay. So Alhamdulillah. Anything else that I may be missing that you want to bring to the attention? Unplanned. Something unplanned shows up. You didn't plan for it. Mm -hmm. So it makes me very stressful. Then mm. I, um, I become like I panic, and then I shout at the kids so mm. because they have made the mess because mm. they mm. are cleaning. So mm. that makes me very stressful. Jazakumullah for sharing that. That this is what we do. Like you know, like when we sort out things, we point to specific things that it's easier for us to you know uh, to take measures. Like you know, like we have guests who call and they say they're coming in one hour. Now, one option is I say, just like we are conditioned to say, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and then what happens is like you turn into a dinosaur and you like, you know. So that's all a series of events, right? That's one thing. But the, on the other hand, if somebody is control of things, they can keep calm and they can say, like, so, so just like my example I said, like today I said, no, this surgery cannot happen today because I want to be calm when I go in on the operation theater. So give me this day. Let me just, you know, figure out the things, the other things which are happening, and then let me go there. So if you can tell to the to your guests that, oh, this is not the right time, maybe if you can postpone it to a certain, so it all needs sort of necessary steps. And the, at the end of the goal, the goal of the day is, do you know you can optimize your life and you can maximize your hasanat. Sometimes in the effort of doing that good, that alhamdulillah you are you know, doing that good, there's so much other bad that has been done alongside, and then there's a big struggle. So, so should we stop here if we feel that, oh, no, we are all calm and everything is fine? Or do we need, how many of you feel that we need tools to keep calm as purposeful for us? 
alhamdulillah now there are multiple techniques all right so when we study like especially like me i'm a computer software engineer and uh, with my three kids you know uh, my older older three who are now teenagers they all memorize the quran alhamdulillah living in united states of america and uh, not only that if they if you give them a plain quran they should be able to give you a meaning without looking at the meaning that was my core specialization that i have built and that's what i specialize in in raising rising stars so in that situation um you know there is you know you come across lots and lots of researches that you study and you deal with and subhanallah some of these people have spent years building those strategies and tools but when we look at them from the quranic perspective from the eye and the wisdom of what the prophet sallallahu have told us you know that dream is to bring them both together so i am a big big advocate that there is something called steam learning right science technology engineering art and management but we should all aim towards stream where religion is like a key ingredient part of it so in this gathering we are going to see inshallah three tools and i hope you know you can you will be able to walk away with at least one thing and you need to share please do share before you leave that what is one thing that i'm going to apply in my life from today all right so inshallah with that uh, with a smile on our face we're going to pause get ourselves in a relaxed posture put a smile on our face and ask allah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me those tools i can't change the world but i can focus on myself inshallah and I, whatever i cannot change i will let it be because what will be will be but what i can change i need to focus on that and inshallah i'm going to get the maximum results for that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that al kalimatul hikma dalatul mu'min fa haythu wajadaha fa huwa ahqqu biha the word of wisdom is the lost property of the believer wherever he finds it he is more worthy of it so we hear about technologies like nlp there is silva there is other meditation there is yoga there is you know so many other options alhamdulillah we have wastainu bis sabri was sala there's so many things but we want to make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit from me from all of this now the first tip that i'm going to share with you i learned this from my little one she's a teenager right now is inspiring moving towards medical route but mashallah she taught me when she was probably a second grader or second grader and she learned this from her non muslim teacher so one day i'm chatting with her and she says mama today i learned peace you can all do that with me in, on the fingers peace starts with me and if you're writing this down write this me with big peace starts with me so sometimes when we are in that process of shouting and you know trying to get things ready in that one hour or doing these things and we are like why can't you do this why don't you do that you do that we forget that peace starts with me so when we many of the times feel that my child is not collaborating my you know spouse is not collaborating my environment is not collaborating my life you know nobody is working out at that time i just need to tune in and say that peace starts with me if the other person whoever it could be in that shoe is being very unreasonable i'm still getting reward at that time if i am patient if i am able to stay calm then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells me and it should echo in my mind wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin right and wallahu yuhibbus sabirin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are patient in allah ma'a sabirin but am i exercising patience if i am like smoking out and giving out everything that i need to give out and then then it's not going to be worth it so yes we are all humans you can be expressive you can tell about your situation that this is the situation this is what's happening this is how i'm feeling but there's a difference between going through the other route so this something that really helps me and i'm going to share with you is that sometimes all you need to do is just remind yourself peace starts with me peace starts with me So even in a world which is falling apart Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us like even if you have like a you know a uh, um a sampling in your hand and if the day of judgment is being established you go ahead and plant it you just go ahead and plant it so no matter what's happening around you just focus on what can i do right now to fix things all right so peace starts with me inshallah so that is something so important like two days back we were at a hospital and my mom we were entering the there's a prayer room apparently people who are conscious mindful trying to be purposeful positive people they are going in for salah but what do you see outside the room can anybody guess what do you see as you know as you trying to enter that room what do you see outside hmm 
very good i heard the urdu form say the urdu chappals <laughs> so all you see is like you know you just the puppy the people are coming for salah which is supposed to be a best meditation but what do you do they just leave their shoes like that and they're just running inside come on you are being the biggest nuisance to people coming behind you and you think you are you know connecting with the creator inside is does that even make sense like at least remind yourself that peace starts with me my shoe has to go in the right place either you put it on the shelf with tawakkul ala allah <laughs> or you put it in your you know with yourself keep it with yourself in an appropriate way and you know you just deal with that situation so this is something i played with my mom <laughs> two days back so she she went inside and i just took her shoes and my shoes and put it in my big bag and when she came out i enjoyed the expressions like where did the shoes go <laughs> because i didn't need to, i didn't want to take chances you know because i had like a limited stay and i thought i don't want to what my shoes to be gone so you just keep them safe or be sorry right so i cannot control what will happen when i'm inside so why not i'm just giving you a very simple example i can control the situation then why should i go in that problem situation so peace starts with me is very important now second thing is something a little bit complicated however much you get you will get allah permits inshallah we do bigger workshops in which we will be able to understand this more this phenomena more this is called flip the lid okay so this is your hand and in this hand one thing we're going to call your big brain and the other one is your little brain now these are coming from trauma treatment centers where people literally like they have very bad experiences and how do you deal with some children like that some parents like that how do they keep their emotional calm and they still able to keep calm so the big brain and little brain has to work together so to make you that you are able to do what you need to do so how does it work right so when you flip your lid like when your hand is fully you know this is your hand but if you keep it like this it means my lid is intact all right i am in control of the situation right but if my hand is like that it means that your feelings get so big that you lose control of your ability to think and act clearly you forget all those learning that how to keep calm and how do i need to do the right things you just kind of forget it you know it's there that teaching is there and everything is there but you kind of forget it so this is hand brain model so pretend your hand is a brain and your uh, wrist is your brain stem so enjoy looking at your hand okay this is my hand and this is my uh, you know my wrist and you can do this once you go home with your children also you can teach them as well all right and this could be a code sign in your house also so next time if your child is doing something that you know you're not you know appreciating you can always just give them a sign like you know let's bring this lid and put it back on top so how we're going to see it inshallah so how we will see it is this that you know um your wrist is your brain stem that helps you with life functions like breathing your heart beating and sleeping okay now when you place your thumb across the palm of your hand to make a number four like these are four right here four fingers pointing up your thumb is your little brain all right so this one is your little brain right here and you put your fingers over your thumb that is like your big brain okay that helps you to think to reason to problem solve and have self self control it is the thinking part of your brain remember the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if something is somebody is not you know doing something right just give them 70 excuses that's what it is going to be like now your little brain is like a security guard when it feels like you are in danger it goes into a protection mode it takes over your big brain and puts you in a fight flight or freeze response so when your big brain is disengaged it's gone out it has the options that should i just run away or should i fight or just should i freeze and stop functioning this is what's happening with most of us we like to fight or we like to flight just ignore everything and you know do whatever and <laughs> you know you just want to walk away from there all right and or you just freeze and you're unable to do thing so this is how your body acts during stress and um, this is how it's you know working it out so it just helps you symbolize and make it better now what do we have to do to help you get your thinking uh, brain back on track and have all of the, these parts communicating together you need to calm your big feelings so that's something that you have to physically know that oh you know what my big brain is released and i need to bring this back and there are actually tips and techniques to do that okay and this is where you know from our quran and hadith so if you go at that time and you praying salah it's like getting this big feelings back if you go and make wudu at that time this is like bringing this flip back in place so let's say you know big something happening and you're like okay let me just 
let me just focus, let me just go take a walk. It will just give my mind a little thing, right? So just like sometimes you say, you know what? You know, we have talked about this enough. Let's just do istikhara and let me just go and sleep and then let me come back and see what's going on the next day and hopefully everything will get. How many of you have experienced, sometimes you take a shower, just a hot shower and that helps you just calm yourself back down. So this is just an example of how you can use this strategy to flip your lid back. And there are many options. Anybody wants to share what helps you? What do you do? So many of us, you know, do we do what? Chai pee ke aati hu, fir kaam karti hu. Right? Let me just make a cup of tea for myself. I just need five minutes to focus and tea. Some of us grab a pencil and paper and we start writing. Okay, you know, what is something that is still, still needs to be done? What needs to happen? And that will help us, inshallah, that how we need to do that. And uh, for some of us, is is a hug and things like that. So, inshallah, if you research more on this flip the lid, you will find many ways how you can based on the age of your child, how you can educate them also. But for a very little child, it's very easy. This is your little brain and your big brain. Oh, if you have a tantrum, oh, you know what? Your big brain is kind of flipped off and I need to flip it back on. And even telling yourself also that, you know what? I'm not acting who I am. This is not who I am. I need to just freeze right now and I just need to bring this back, engage this back. So this is how you work, you regulate. So let's say you have a child, right? And the child is crying or doing what? And you're like, why are you crying? And what's happening? And I want you to get this done. No, you just come to the child, get through to their level, give them a hug. And that's, have, that's doing what? It's doing regulating, regulation. So I'm gonna you know, leave you with this terminology to search what is regulation. So there are things which are self-regulation and there are things which are co-regulation. So here in this example, you see that first the person is you know, helping this child regulate, then they're doing what is called relate in part of the three R's. And the third thing is reason. All right. So inshallah, on the same channel, you will hear about our story when we missed our flight, what happened. So that was a moment of calibration. In this particular trip, we missed one, by one minute, we missed a flight. And then that trickled our series of events. So what do we need to do? We need to sit, relate, and then we need to reason. Now what should we do? What are the options? Write them down. You know, calm, calm ourselves down, step by step. Okay, the luggage has to come back. Now what we will do and how we will do it. So that is reason and relate and at that it's very important. So this self-regulation is the ability to understand and manage your own behavior and reactions. So please, if you think that you're going to raise like, you know, ideal, you know, kids or ideal people around you, that is very far-fetched, okay? There is nothing ideal, this is nothing perfect in this world because we are not in Jannah yet. This is a, a light, this is a test and we are part of it and we are tested and tried to different people in different ways and different situations. What we need to focus is our own self and in that situation, how do I do my own self-regulation, all right? And self-regulation helps children learn it helps the teenagers learn it helps them behave well and get you know along with others and become independent to the point that your children will tell me tell you also sometimes that mom you know what i just need time to regulate myself right you know like i just need some space right now just give me some time so that i can also process because life is continuously changing there's continuously things happening there are continuously deadlines to meet places to go so there is going to be there so this self regulation begins to develop even from the preschool years or the toddler years and you will see that even a little child my little one he doesn't speak a word yet but he will nod with his head and if you present him something, he will say, no, I don't want this right now. So that's also part of like self-regulation that I do not need this right now, mom. You know, just take my clue that I am not ready for this. Now, how many of us love stories? Hmm? So I'm gonna give you the third tip of the third tool, how to stay calm. What was the first one? Let's say this together. Okay, let's do it one more time like a jama. And me is me, <laughs> not they. Me is me, Anna, right? <laughs> so I just need to be the peaceful. So if someday you are like really stressed, go ahead and bring out the best suit that you have. Put on that lipstick, put on that, you know, makeup, put on that earrings, you know, that you need to wear. And just, as they say, laughter is the best medicine, just do that, inshallah, all right? Because peace starts with me. How many of you promise you will do that? Inshallah. All right. So I was just having a bad day, so I thought I'll use a good shirt. Like yesterday, my brother like gave a gift, so you know, and I opened it my for my son. And the shirt said, "Today is going to be the best day ever." And we were going for you know neurosurgeons and scientists and whatnot, 
appointments ahead and I was like, yeah, today is going to be the best day ever. <laughs> you know, so this is what I needed to see. So the story, coming to the story, I'm going to tell you a small story and I hope you can share this with your children, inshallah. There was a girl one time and she saw a little, just like a little girl there, and she saw like a little fluff uh, toy in the corner. And this toy was looking at her. And she looked at him, and when she looked at this toy, the name was Wadi. And it started becoming big, all right? So pretend like, let's say this is, this is that stuff I'm So anytime she's looking at it, this is growing, all right? And this is her worries. So the more she's looking, the more they are growing, to the point that this Wadi filled the entire house of hers. So one day she walks outside and she's somebody else sitting down and they he you know this person had a worry next to to him and that's a small worry there. So she asked him she asked him she's like what is your worry? And this person said you can see it. So she said yes because I have a worry of my own and it's like in my whole house it's covering my whole house. So so she said yeah. So he said oh that's amazing that you can see it because I thought nobody can see it. And I just, whenever I see my worry, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they started talking about those worries, you know. And guess what happened? These worries started shrinking and becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So this tip is really important. Value the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Having parents, having, you know, your peers, your brothers, your sisters. Yes, you are raising children, but they are raising too. Yes, you are having problems with teenagers, but they are having too. So when you sit together, you know, with a loved one, with a family member, with somebody like your own age group, you know, your mom and dad, and you're able to share that this is what the problem that I'm going through, I do not know what should I do at this time, you will get a lot of advice and things like that versus just sitting with Sheikh Google, right? So, <laughs> because sometimes it will just amplify the worries because they will give you all kind of extreme situations and this and this, this not. So, and same thing, when you put your head on your sajada and you put all your worries, you earth it down, then it automatically, you know, kind of drains that worries also and takes them away. So inshallah, take this as a tip and identify how I'm going to reduce my worries. So this regulation, self-regulation, and then co-regulation. Working with somebody, like when you come as a team, as a place where your child, children are growing up, you have classroom, like your same homeroom teachers, you know, you're sitting together and you experience the same thing, like this is happening, or this time of the year, this is happening, and my child is asking for this, and how do you manage it, or technology-wise, how are you implementing this guideline in your home? That's really going to help you, inshallah. So, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa enable us to guide us to the right. And you know, when I talk about this story, these two characters could be your children also. If you sit with them directly and tell them that, you know what, I, my phone usage have gone up so much. You know, beta, I, my, I see my phone, oh my God, I have like this many hours. Because you know, now every family member is accessible, no matter which part of the world you are. Everybody seems to feel that you're just a click away and they want to call and they want to talk to you. And you do not have that time and bandwidth. You have you know, so many other things to do in a house. So that just keeps adding up. And then you have piles of unread messages and piles of phone calls and piles of beta. What do you think I should do? So, so your child will also tell you that, hey, you know, my teacher is also putting a lot of work on me. So I mean, it's not like when you see me on a computer, I am just playing game or something, but I'm actually trying to research and do some of my, of my work. So that helps us to have empathy. And uh, this is, you know, uh, one of my last session that I did uh, in this city was about parent empowerment. How are you going to have this empowerment, basically? So at the end of this, I'm just going to remind myself and all of us that we need to think before we act. Take some more. My, you know, moment. T for is it true? H is it helpful? I is it you know, um, is it intelligent to do this? N is it necessary? Or K is it kind? What I'm about to say or do, and do not rush with things. That's a command from Allah subhanahu wa taala, right? Haste makes waste. So give yourself time, and then practice gratitude. When when it becomes really stressful, that oh my God, what are they doing? And what? Stop thanking Allah. Allah, you gave me this child. Alhamdulillah. You know, you, you gave me this child and an opportunity to, you know, deal with him. And maybe this is my door to Jannah. This is, you know, maybe you have chosen a door for somebody. Sometimes we can have serious situations where the child is ser severely impaired and you are taking care of that child. Look at this child and start, you know, looking at this child in a different perspective that this is what 
you know, it is. And the at the end of the day, when you will fi fi feel calm, La in my last session, one of my moms, she said, you know what, I have an autistic child, and this is what. And I said, you know, this is so commendable that you are you are at calm and peace with saying that I have an autistic child. Because when we're in a denial, then no, 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 my child is not autistic, then you are you know, in a lot of trouble. But once you accept it and you're like, okay, this is what I'm doing, the opportunities are endless. Like, you know, mom was reminding that day that we have a person who is blind, but right now he's running a whole organization. And mashallah, they're coming up with, you know, menu cards for blinds and amazing work happening. So if we just start, you know, uh, keeping ourselves calm, then we will avoid these arguments with our own self, the fights with our own self that, oh, no, I'm not supposed to be here. Why am I Why am I stuck with this situation and things like that, right? So that will really, really help. And uh, we have to practice meditation regularly. That is something really, really important. So as Muslims, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us these five times prayers. And there's a reason Allah created qalam, like the pen, the first thing, right? Allah SWT says in the Quran, noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. So inshallah in a lot of situations to keep calm i want you to physically write things like for example your morning routine you want to write your ideal morning routine that this time we need to be doing waking up this time is our salah time this time is our bath time if we are sharing resources let's say you have one bathroom that all the family is using there should be an identified time allocation just like when you go to a school why it becomes all of a sudden serene because they have a scheduled way of doing things so that same schedule has to come to the house and most of us are visual learners even right now if somebody gives me a clue or you have five more minutes or you know you have time till this time i know okay i have to work around with this time versus not knowing what's going on then i can just sit here and talk forever Right? So same thing for our children. You just don't want to write. And you know what? Our uh, start time from the house is, let's say, 8 o'clock. I need everybody you know, down in the kitchen by 8.45 so that we are able to eat together. So that is one thing that I have enforced in my home, that you know, Maghrib to Isha is our family time. No technology, no nothing, not even mom and dad. <laughs> Nobody should have their phones and everything. And we just need to enjoy one meal together. So, and the breakfast time is the same. So just enjoy that meal together. Sometimes obviously you want to fast, some people are doing sahur and you know the others are not. So you can, you can decide for your own home what works. But the most important thing is to try to look for khair in every shar. And that comes with knowledge and intellect. That okay, this is a very bad situation, but what's the khair coming out of it? Right now what's happening in Gaza, you, I personally witness this every day that people are taking shahada left and right in USA right now. The more they are you know, being unreasonable, the more people are getting to know about Islam and they are coming towards Islam. The more people we are losing, it's hard aching to see that. But subhanAllah, 100 years from now, nobody's going to be on this earth anyways, right? But these people have made their way to Jannah with the sacrifice and the shukr and the gratitude that they still have. So they, they can never be defeated. They can never be defeated. So what we need to do is keep calm and stay positive. But that doesn't mean that we don't do anything. In the mal usri yusra. We have to take practical steps. This is a wrong mindset. Oh, I'm a very calm person. I just sit here and watch everything. <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's not the right thing to do and that's like you know running away from your responsibilities that's not the right thing to do if you have to make some changes you have to be mindful of what your responsibilities are and make appropriate arrangements for doing that right so for example like if you're staying you you know you know that you have to get somewhere you will probably wake up early and get your food ready for your lunch time you you planned okay today we're going to attend this session that doesn't mean that everybody has to be punished for it, that you go home and there's nothing to eat in the house, right? So you probably have to get up, wake up a little bit early, make sure that your lunch is ready, it's okay. So by the time you come back, everything is calm versus everything is like a, you know, a situation. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to keep calm and always, always remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. He loves, he loves you. He's always watching lovingly. What, what are you doing in that situation? And uh, we ask Allah, Allahumma alhimni rushdi wa aizni min shari nafsi. Oh Allah, inspire in me rushd, the guidance. And protect me, save me from the evils from my own self. Okay, because most of the time, it's just like that, that if you are wearing a glasses and they have smudges on it, everything looks smudged. 
but you take off the glasses and you're like wow they really cleaned up their you know their the room but you realize it was just your glasses which were dirty the rest everything was pretty much in good shape alhamdulillah so keep calm because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us dream it dua it and do it ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us you know for purposeful positive parenting which is full of calm and uh, which is stress free because stressed you know if you if you use the word stress and spell it backwards what does it become desserts right <laughs> that gives you diabetes so inshallah take that stress away from you spend some time knowing your own self like what is something that is giving me panic what is something that affects me and then inshallah work around that that you know how can i make this better uh, in in my uh, you know last uh, life with a two year old and the teenagers and everything um, not and, and being outside in us like mashallah many of us are blessed that our parents are right next to us some of us are not like their parents are not next to us so i use like an app it's called a motivation app you know and it what happens it just gives me some reminders needed reminders and sometimes i feel oh my god it's fishing you know what i'm thinking because and i and sometimes you need that positive reminder right so i hope this reminder benefited you in any way if it did it did then please do share how did this help you in your journey inshallah because your word your statement your you know reflection can sh- help somebody else's life and each one can teach one and more than ever before we all need to stay calm and then strategize and focus what we need to do to help you know ourselves our homes turn them into darus salam and at a bigger level you know help those in need around the globe inshallah jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh